Thank you. Yeah, as a, I'm a technologist uh, and innovative thinker, I do the most of the things hands-on. I keep my sleeves rolled up most of the time. Uh, yeah, I teach kids. I think the uh, it's been a years so I found that it's hard to understand things which are going to be in future because we found I found that kids are those who are having strong imagination and I'm not changing topic I'm coming to digital transformation so I started teaching them to understand where the technology is moving so it's it's a very good journey I'm not going to share everything here about that that's not the topic I know uh, but I found that the kids are fast learner and when I started teaching them Python and then IoT in the last eight months I got lots of sensors I found that they inventing things which we usually feel like would take maybe months doing they're doing in a, maybe a week or so so before coming here I didn't even prepare the presentation I was thinking sort of IoT when I come here it starts sensing me and changing my slides the way I go talk. So that's what I was building. Then I got a call from WSO to that asking me whether I have prepared something. I said, no, I'm not preparing presentation. Rather, I'm preparing something in a sensor which I have, which can sense me and talk to my Google Home. So as uh, Asanka explained about the Alexa, and we all know that, I, I'm, a, I'm a, one of the members in the Raspberry Pi where I contribute things uh, from Python and it's mainly from the kids. There's a code club where kids come and uh, that goes back to Raspberry Pi and people may not be using them actively. Uh, this is a magazine called Magpie. I'm not sure if you ever heard or read about it. Magpie started distributing free Google Voice Hat, which is a, a voice recognizer and it does the same thing what Google Home or Alexa does. So we were, I was playing with that before I came to here for the last few days and thinking about preparing some sort of presentation where it start changing my slide the moment I change my topic. Uh, that didn't happen, but let's go ahead with the digital transformation on, on the area of risk management and compliances. I work for SAI Global. Uh, in SAI Global, what we are doing is we are building a we are building a ecosystem, not just a platform, for different applications talking to each other, and that's where we are using lots of new technologies and lots of new, uh, research behind them happening. So, what is SAI Global? I think you must be aware of. I met many people during different uh, breaks that we know about SA Global is a, a leading risk management uh, solution provider. We deal in standards, compliances, settlement services, broking APIs, and all. So what we're doing in SA Global, what is interestingly we are doing is we built up, as I said, a big uh, ecosystem where is a full of APIs and services. Those APIs are mainly for advisory capabilities. Uh, it has a tons of tools and knowledges to enable our customers to have a holistic and integrated view of risk. We, the platform also deals in the some settlement services, which services are used by uh, many advisors um, when, the, when we perform the settlements between two parties, bank mainly and the buyers, of home buyers or property buyers, that's where this platform comes in picture. And the platform also exposing a lot of broking APIs, information broking APIs uh, associated with property, personal and uh, the company. So, the APIs gives all the data about the property and uh, the personal or company. So the reason I'm telling that this whole 
ecosystem which we are building is, has so many capabilities. As you can understand that set, uh, settlement service is very different from risk management. And the risk management is different from selling standards or uh, selling compliances or trainings. We are, as you can say, 2,000 people uh, with uh, a presence in 29 countries with uh, our offices in 51 different cities. This is what I was going to present. I mean, I'm going to just give an idea what we are doing in SAI Global. It's not very structured way because I think people started hating, uh, uh, start hating the layer architecture as we Asanka explained, and I was not aware of this onion diagram either. What we are doing is we're building uh, the whole uh, ecosystem where different, uh, different APIs are talking to, uh, different platforms are talking to each other. So what, what, is this, uh, what is this related with the digital transformation is that, as we know that digital transformation is a hot topic. It's a very hot topic across the companies uh, and uh, for the companies across the uh, 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 what would say that in a uh, top executives are using uh, this uh, buzzword of uh, uh, what we call uh, digital transformation right so what how do i relate things back to the uh, integration ecosystem which we are building here is back on different platforms different uh, systems which we are using here how they talk to each other. And I'll take you back to the, this slide first uh, before I come. That why, when I was thinking, sit, uh, listening to the people here, I was thinking why digital transformation has become uh, so hot in last couple of years. Why people are talking so much about digital transformation, neither digitalization nor transformations are new world. They are there for ages. Digitization are happening for last maybe more than 30, 40 years. And transformation is happening maybe since we've evolved. So wh what happened suddenly in digital transformation area where people are talking so much about it? So when I was thinking back, it's more like the top executives in uh, some organizations are thinking while thinking about whether digital transformation is going to be useful or is having any need for them, while others are actually using it to transform their businesses, to improve their, to improve their customer, customer experiences, customer relationships, their internal or external processes. Some, some I feel like maybe using digital transformation unknowingly, they do not even call it digital transformation, but uh, they're using some advanced digitals like mobility, uh, the, the analytics, uh, maybe uh, the data from social media, and uh, some integrated, uh, in, uh, integrated systems to talk to each other. So they are, they, I, there are many industries where our uh, digital transformation is taking place. I heard someone ask that, is there any industry where digital transformation is not as fast as others? And I was thinking back that there's an, I don't believe there's any industry left where the digital transformation doesn't have its impact. I, I uh, met many farmers in uh, NSW and Victoria where I found that they are even using technology to improve their productivity. Uh, so coming back to SAI Global, in SAI Global, uh, as we were asking that, and, uh, and again, it's based on my, my own observation that we've been, uh, we've been talking uh, about the technology and we are talking about then applications. I think that, that in a in a, in a in a SAI Global, there's a place where we are filling the gap of how those technologies and how the business can talk to each other and implement or roll it out. So the questions people been asking that is that 
digital technologies only for some startups? Or is it for some high-tech companies like Google or uh, Amazon? I think it's very, it's very important to understand that most of the companies, most of the businesses are neither startups nor high-tech companies. You can count those high-tech companies, and there are not many successful startups either. I have been part of uh, many digital transformation journeys. There are some successful, there are some not successful or unsuccessful. I have worked for eBay, for Westpac, BT Financial, I met some guys here. I have worked for uh, uh, SAI Global. And what I found that, based on my observation, that digital transformation is not about going being big bang on changing everything and buying some latest technologies. The approach which we took is based on the experience of the, uh, the team we have internally. We had many systems, as you can see in the gray areas, and I use the acronym, sorry for that. Uh, they are like subscription, DRM, ERP, CRM, and OMS. OMS is order management system, customer relationship management, subscription system, digital right management, and ERP. We were, not, we were not able to transform them in the same speed as other colorful systems here are. So the picture which I want, want to show here is that uh, there, are, there are large traditionals from out there, those who are having decades of history. It's not easy for them to transform, as we call, changing things, which is not the right word. There's a difference between change and transformation, as we understand. But it's not easy for those traditional firms to replace everything in one go and then check if things work for them or not. I think I have been part of many digital transformation discussions. And even today, if you realize, most of the examples which we take are either startups. Uber has started this, and they have disrupted the technologies or businesses. Or we take the high-tech firms like Amazon has launched something called Alexa and doing this and that. And you go in the, you go in the store, it does check out itself. What I found. I mean, and even the, during the discussion here, not even here, many other places that we are more concerned about those traditional firms when we take an example, how they can use the digital transformation for their businesses. There are so many heavyweight components or applications which cannot be transformed. When they cannot be transformed, what should be the approach? Uh, the approach which we in the SCI Global found should be use the legacy system and build the new capabilities which directly connect with your customer experiences. So uh, you cannot evolve all the parts with the same speed, same time. Transformation may appear a natural process, as easy process as monkey transformed into a human. That was the evolution, right? But if you ask human how he got transformed today, he may not be having all the answers. And there are many unknown factors which actually force transformation. So transformation is a actually journey which starts from some place to other, it doesn't stop, it doesn't mature at any place. What, what we found, the challenges in the business which we are in, mainly like traditional firms which have been there for three, four decades, doing their businesses, they, on one side we have some unsuccessful examples which people name Nokia, maybe uh, blockbusters. We, we are not blindfolded from those examples. 
but the challenge is how do we transform so that our customer experience become better and we keep doing the businesses. So I'm taking, I will take back and forth. I said that I'm not very organized in my slide. Please excuse me for that. But I, I take you back on this and sorry, I'll take you back on this diagram and take forward again on the what points which I want to make is about how those big organizations where we have already huge components to be used in a digital transform journey. We can't throw them out. We can't, can't throw them away. So as I don't go by size, size doesn't mean that they are that huge or big. The CRM, OMS, application, ERP, DRM, and our uh, subscription module was not way we could have replaced them overnight. But there are many factors which were forcing us to go in the journey of digital transformation. The factors I put all, and they, are, they match, I think, with the, what Sanjeeva presented in the morning. I was seeing that your customer experience, your operational process, your business models, these are the factors, and I added one more is a mar market competition. These are the factors which force the journey of digital transformation is not as natural or as easy as it sounds. Digital transformation is forced by some factors, and customer experience is one of them. Customer relationship is one of them. In GSI, in SAI, we had many systems which we had acquired or built over the period of last 10 or 15 years. They were in different technologies, they were in different languages. So the idea of building ecosystem sounds even more advanced than the firms which I have worked before. I have worked for eBay where we talk about building the platform and the idea of building ecosystem sounds uh, better than just building platforms. We are focusing on platforms. If you see, the e-commerce platform is very different from the property platform. But we are a one company. We can't say that you are, I'm talking about enough customer experience perspective that you cannot say that you are the person from our property platform. We do not know when you come to our e-commerce platform. And I'm sure that I have talked to many people, same challenges are there. It's easy, as I said, that when we have a small company, small startup, to transform it digitally, transform digitally easily, right? But the companies like what we, the approach we, we took, we had our e-commerce e platform, we built it from scratch, keeping customer user experience perspective in our mind. We have digitally transformed in this area where our publishers, those who are selling their standards, or trainings, push things to our MDM. MDM then, is we have a content management system which goes to our e-commerce platform, and then you have your listing up there which can be, uh, become an order. So this whole part is transformed. Then we are building ecosystem, and if you see the ecosystem, we are having identity access manager and enterprise service buses. The point which I wouldn't want to highlight, and I was talking to someone as well, that when you have heterogeneous system where your legacy application and new applications want to talk, the enterprise service bus is actually the key, key player here. We may not throw our DRM and ERP services, but we can still talk having a better user experience by connecting to them through ESB. We are using WSO2 ESB here, mainly and it's the WSO2 IM, Identity Access Manager. Sorry, I didn't put the name and all. I just built it in a, in a uh, hurry. Uh, we are calling this whole as a SAI global ecosystem, and when we go to the property platform, in the property platform, you have a, your vendors, banks, real estate, solicitors, which are having something to sell, and then it goes and sold. We have lots of tools in the platform which are exposed through API. As I think if I take you back quickly, if you uh, look at the kind of services we are providing in the market, it's not possible if we do not expose them as an API. We have, I think, uh, 
thousands of APIs. Each our platform is divided into the services, and each service is further divided into the microservices. So most of our microservices are REST API, internally or externally. Even we intentionally kept them REST API when talking to internally. And the point which I'm ready, I know I'm not very structured, not talking in a flow, but the reason I'm saying that when you're talking to your internal systems, it's very important that your talk, your discussion in, within internal systems should also be REST API based or microservices based. It's not easy for us then to replace the, the, your DRM system that's in the future. So the ecosystem which talks to each other is through the REST API. The, the challenge which we had mainly on Identity Access Manager, we had more than 15 systems where same users are registered multiple times. We wanted to have a single customer view. That's where Identity Access Manager play a, a big role. We got Salesforce, which is our ERP. We got many other systems. We got Adobe marketing system. They were talking to each other now through IAM. So the, the huge efforts, which is not by the size here, which looks a small part, the, to build that, build that Entity Access Manager. And Entity Access Manager is not just being used for single customer view, but also to secure our APIs through ESBs. The, our internal APIs are as secure as external APIs. And I said that when you're building the platform, when you're building the, uh, the new generation system, you must keep in mind that anything can move from future perspective. I, I'm, I have worked as an architect for eBay. I always try to relate things back to the, our daily lives. I always try to find examples in IT how they would be done by the nature. I look at how things are trans getting transformed in the nature and then try to relate them back to the, our uh, virtual world, which I call our digital world. Uh, for digital transformation, I was looking at examples, thinking where things are moving. And I was looking at not just in IT, People are digitally transforming in other areas. I found, I'm not sure whether you heard that, I found a few weeks back that someone invented a water tap, a water tap which is having mist out of it rather than water flow. And now people will come up with the question, what's the use of that? I think what they claim, and which is quite true as well, that it saves 90% of water. If you are using 10 buckets for some task, let's say to take shower, it, the same effect can be done with the one bucket. So you're saving nine buckets of water. But then water seems so cheap to all of us. We do not care much while wasting it every day. So what is the point? Why should I go and buy that missed thing? I think that's where digital transformation is. I'm not sure how, I, how, I'm, if, how effective I am to relate them back. But back in my mind, I always think that digital world is no different from our nature. You, if you're not saving those water uh, mist today or the flow today, you will have the future uh, the problem in the future. That's what we see. see uh, look at that, that way. So I took that example of water mist. That how these people did when they were transforming. There was an approach uh, in the case study. They were thinking about to build a tap, the water tap. Entire. But imagine that how many people would use that? Will they replace their all the taps? Not easy, I think. So what they did, they just have a um, small, I don't know what they're called, uh, a small thing which you can fit back to your existing tab and use it. So what, what, is the, what is the take from here? What is the thing which you I'm understanding? I'm seeing that you want to transform not transform everything. It is not necessary. You can build something smartly. We just need to integrate back to things. So they took that and integrated back to things. They, they built integrators in between. So your old tab and new t uh, things can go hand in hand. And then you're using same effect, same purpose. So that's the 
that's a transformation. I mean, that's the way I see the transformation. Same approach I take back when I build some, some platforms or some technology things. I, we, there was approaches that to move everything, which, what we started doing, we started building the connectors, connectors in our ESB, which can talk. The Salesforce connector, which is, I think, built in, in the WSO2 ESB. We had many other systems where we built all the connectors. We started thinking about connectors, and then we made them talk to each other. So let's go to other thing. I'm, uh, what, is the, what is the challenge in, I'm talking about the hi hybrid things now. The word which I started talking about, the ecosystem, which is, Technology agnostics. Why I call that this way? Because when we look at this system, I do not, I do not care much about what this particular property platform is written on. I still can communicate back to get the data from my IAM if the customer is there to give him some experience up here. So digital transformation here, uh, if you look at, I'm taking again back here because I'm not again, structured, as I said. I was listening to one of the discussion asking about, uh, I mean, the, some picture was here about uh, Amazon is suggesting us to buy, you may also like kind of thing. And I worked for eBay for around five years. And the challenge was, you may also like can be very, uh, in a negative way as well, because people may not be liking that. Uh, we had a Toys R Us, coming to eBay from Amazon, the reason was there was some Toys R Us toy presented and you may also like had some Chinese product. So when I look at that product, I say it's just a toy for kids. Why not buy $3 things instead of $60 things here? And people started buying those things when Toys R Us found that most of their items are not being sold but viewed and on the contrary, the you may also like is the one being bought. So they sued the Amazon in 2005, in 2007 I was there. We got Toys R Us back in eBay system. So Toys R Us, on, they run their business uh, on the eBay. So the point which I'm making here is that the, you may also like thing which Amazon is presenting is it needs another way, level of uh, transformation which we are trying to do here in uh, SAI Global. It is, it is about connecting two products. Who is dependent, who is actually making them UMA also, like is our merchandiser. So we are selling standards. We also sell the trainings here. So standard, when you buy, let's say, some agriculture standards, you try to buy training related with that. And not easy to find those trainings which are related with that standard. So what we are trying to do is to build a, an artificial intelligence where instead of I match you may also like, it should be based on customer experience. So we are back in our database, we are building this database here, where when someone buys some items and then go for another items, we understand they are somehow related. So for our merchandiser, the, the main job is just to review rather than to marry them. So you buy a standard, you, you see the training which is related with that. So it's, a, it's, a, you, it's an advance you may also like. So, even I think Amazon or eBay doesn't have this capability yet, which we are trying to build in the IAM here. So when you buy, it's your all preferences from even other world are here, which we try to back in our system and talk to each other and then display the email. So like, that's what's going to be launched soon. So, um, yeah, so the, 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 that's the way tech, technology is something moving towards and we need to look at. Coming back to the, uh, I am thing which we, as I said, that we are not only building a single customer view, but we are using the we are using the I am for securing our APIs. As uh, Sanjeeva mentioned, that APIs sec security is a huge thing, and that's what the I am plays a role. Um, the factors behind the digital transformation, as I talked, they are mainly your customer experience your business model, and your uh, processes. I personally feel that digital transformation is not about, not about the techniques or technology. It's more about mindset and uh, culture. 
there are two things which I wanted you guys to have out of this uh, insight of, out of my uh, presentation. One is that the tech digital transform is a hot topic. When it's a hot, I think it's, it needs a lot of uh, uh, handling. I mean, you should not just jump because of digital transformation is a hot topic, and we should try. It requires lots of research. As any hot items, you have to be careful about what it is about. I think second thing is some misunderstanding about uh, about the digital transformation. So any discussion which I have been part of, as I listed, that they are more mainly highlighting the startups or high tech firms. It is not just about them. It is about everything which you're using, even agriculture, where we are using uh, IOTs, has proved that it is not just about uh, either IT companies or startups or or some high tech firms. I I have I have been personally using lots of IOT in the agriculture field. I work for uh, as a volunteer for farmers uh, in uh, New South Wales, uh, and what I found that. Uh, the example of SAI as a digital transformation is more suitable than using Uber or Amazon, where, where we are doing something very different. So it's a, it gives you a different perspective. Uh, people talk about building a new organization. I've heard someone saying that, do you have IT capabilities within SAI Global? So for me, Building digital transformation is not building a new organization within the organization. I have worked for a company in Geelong where IT division was set up newly, and it was then made set up in the corner somewhere uh, behind all the clothes they were hanging because the, I think the idea was they wanted to be transformed by hiring some digital IT guys and thinking that even if they will make us present on, online is enough because they're doing most of the business offline. So what I'm saying is, it is it is not about creating a new organization, but it is about remodeling what you have and realigning with your business processes. I heard that Sanjeeva talk about it's not a bottom-up or top-down approach. It's from everywhere. But I still believe that uh, the digital transformation is a bottom-up, uh, it, it is a top-down approach. Uh, the example I have a few examples which I see that there's someone who invented the digital camera in 1975, talked to his guy, uh, CEO, and then the company is not in the market anymore, right? So it's not about the top down, is not about the, your position, rather, it's about actually in a flat organization, if someone is having some uh, ideas, can be heard. And that's what in SA Global, even I was work as an architect, I think we started building a very good harmony between business and technology people. That's where the technical transformation comes in picture. It's not about only technology. Uh, as I said, it's not always replacing some new uh, old items with the new. You can ha still have your legacy applications running. Just make them connected. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. So this is a slide which I just put to show what example I was taking that you, your old tab can transform into the mist by just changing the nozzle there. And that's what we did here. If you look at this where we were here a few years back in SA Global, and this is the direction we are taking. So it is an ongoing journey. I don't know whether how we predict what would be here. I think that my approach Nobody knows the future, though, but my approach for that is not being tactical, but being strategic. You should understand that someone has already in found that there's some problem going to be related with this drop here, and they invented this mist. Similarly, in technology, I think we should start keep looking at the continuous changes happening and then build. This is what we were back in 2013, and this is what we are today. So the, and we do not know about future, but this is the journey I think we should keep moving. Uh, we talk about all this, and I think I'm running out of time, but I'll take a few more minutes. Uh, we talk about uh, only successful businesses, but there are uh, common mistakes people make in digital transformation. I think, again, I will relate back to the 
relate back to the, our, my example that I found someone who bought that missed thing is still using the picture I wanted to show is this one. Someone actually who felt that he is digitally transformed by putting the mist, but he's still filling the buckets with the same way and then using them for his shower. So is this not going to be useful? I mean, the same mistake we do in IT, I found. I have a few examples. I don't know whether I can explain them in now. But I found that a company, and I can't name them, they actually spent lots of money and efforts to roll out ERP and CRM together. The project went for two years. They had all the CRM now ERP. But still, they didn't, act, they didn't find the same result out after two years. They were saying just a small changes in the way business was happening. So, and I was thinking back, when they have ERP now and CRM, why still they couldn't change the business, couldn't transform things? And what I found that the data is there, the customer data is there, but the analytics is missing. So it's the same way that it's a half big things where you have actually feel like you transformed, you have spent enough money in, build, in building that, but you haven't actually uh, changed the way they should be used. So that's why I call data with no analytics. You have all the customer data because you have you know, ERP and CRM together, but then the missing part is analytics. So I think it's important to understand that just by changing one water tap won't say water for you. You should know how to use it. The people, and I have seen this in many projects, people feel like they have, uh, they have already used the technologies which they're feeling, but it's still not getting the same results. The, is as you compare with the real world problems, where not by just changing the, some new technology can help you, rather you should know how to use them. Uh, I think that's what a point I wanted to make. And uh, um, as I said, that I'm not very structured in uh, my presentation. I know that, but I just wanted to present things. The two main uh, points I wanted to highlight is that it's not digital transformation. Not about changing everything. In SA Global, we are proving that you can have heavyweight legacy systems running. And I know some people already worked with SA. I talked to some few here people talking about the property management. They said it's a .NET. How did you make it happen there? And it was having Rabbit MQ inside it. And we're saying how you're using now WS2 ESB. And I think it's more important about you build something for looking at your customer experience, customer relationships, and then build the connectors and use your legacy system as well. I think that's.